Hello everybody, it's Whiskey11 and welcome back to the Gaming Lounge. And in this episode in our How to Play series on the US Destroyer lines, we are going to cover the Tier 3 Wix Class Destroyer. And as I mentioned in the previous video, we're not going to dive into the history of these ships, so let's get right into those stats. The Wix has 8,900 hit points. Its main battery consists of four four-inch guns. You've got uh, one mounted up front, we've got two sitting amidship, and one at the stern of the ship. They have a 9.2 kilometer firing range, seven second reload. A HE shell does 1500 damage when you get a Citadel hit, which isn't going to happen, and 1700 when you have a Citadel with the AP hit. Reload time, again, a fairly quick, seven seconds. It's, it's a fairly high rate of fire gun, and it kind of sets off the US uh, down a little bit of a gunboat line. And what I've found now replaying through all these ships is I'm, I'm learning new tactics. Like, even to this day, I'm still learning new tactics, and hopefully we'll get to kind of cover that a little bit in our battle video. Uh, one of those new tactics involves the torpedoes. Uh, we are upgrading from the Samson's eight total torpedoes to now 12 in four triple launchers. You have two launchers on each side for a total of six on each side. Uh, they have a 56 knot speed, a 5 kilometer uh, range, 9,900 damage, and a 1.1 kilometer detection range. So, not the fastest, not the hardest hitting, not the longest range, but certainly fairly good. In terms of any aircraft defense, well, it's a tier 3 destroyer, and... Um, yeah, you're not going to be shooting down too much in the way of airplanes with this thing. Uh, your anti-aircraft suite consists of two 50 caliber Mod Deuce machine guns. That's right, Mod Deuce. And a single 3-inch 23 caliber uh, anti-aircraft gun. 13 damage. 35% increase just by prior reinforcing a sector. Firing range of three kilometers. This thing is not an anti-aircraft gun, but we're not going to see good anti-aircraft gun suites come until tier five and up. Uh, so we won't even continue to talk about that. Maneuverability. This is where, in my opinion, Wix really shines. Continuing the trend that uh, Samson set forth with being a very agile ship, especially at these lower tiers. 34 knots. This can be boosted up to about 35.7 with the speed flag. 520 meter turning circle radius, 2.7 second rudder shift time. Uh, the ship is very agile and uh, it's kind of necessary. What you'll find is as you're playing, uh, you know, you'll have your guns off to one side here. And if you if you make that, like if we we're shooting at these sailboats over here, committing a war crime, uh, if we were shooting at these sailboats over here, uh, we would be shooting with, you know, these three guns on the right hand side. What we would do then is we'd crank the rudder left and we'd get this one round off and then crank back. It's a very interesting tactic. Uh, it does seem to work out quite well. Actually, we would crank right to get the... You you met what I knew. Anywho, uh, using the rudder shift time and the turning circle radius to do that. In terms of detection range, uh, Wix is not exactly uh, the stealthiest ship at its tier. 6.5 kilometer detection range by sea, 2.4 by air. And like all destroyers, a sure detection range of 2 kilometers if you're in smoke or behind an island. With that... Wix, uh, not a whole lot to go in upgrades. Uh, you know, Tier 3, not a whole lot in upgrades. You, if you're just starting out in the game, you might not even have access to these yet. But when you do get there, if you do have access to these, uh, these are my personal recommendations. In the first slot, I'm going to recommend Main Armaments Mod 1. This is going to be a 20% reduction in the chance of your main battery and torpedo tubes uh, being taken out or damaged to where they reset their reload timer. Uh, it also increases their hit point pool by 50% and decreases the time it takes to repair them by 20%. At this tier, the only other option that I would consider is Magazine Mod 1. That's a 70% reduction in the chance of your magazine detonating. Uh, this is useful if you don't have debt flags or you can just risk the debt flags. It's a fairly rare occurrence. And get debt flags for detonating. That, that's my recommendation. I just Main Armaments Mod 1 just makes more sense. In the second and only other slot... Uh, you'll see I'm running Engine Room Protection. 
Uh, this is going to reduce the chance of your engine and steering gears being incapacitated, so damaged, by 20%. It's going to decrease the time it takes to repair them by 20%. The only other option that you'll have available, unless you have some of these special upgrades, is going to be Damage Control Systems Mod 1. And if you're on fire or flooding, bad things have happened. So your Damage Control Party should be up. And uh, really no reason to run anything except for engine room protection, at least in my opinion. Again, keeping the engines and the rudder alive is important, especially since uh, we may not necessarily have all of the skills that we need to keep ourselves moving as uh, we take damage. So, especially at these lower tiers. In terms of overall playstyle, Wix is like a lot of other U.S. destroyers. It's an incremental improvement over Samson, meaning better guns-ish. <laughs> They're tolerable. Better torpedoes, significantly better torpedoes, uh, and more torpedoes. But it still maintains a very gun-focused gameplay style. And at these lower tiers, I really think that uh, there's no harm in playing a little bit more of what I would call blatantly aggressive. Uh, whereas at the higher tiers, it'll absolutely get you punished. At these lower tiers, cruisers that are shooting at you aren't very accurate. Battleships sure aren't accurate. Other destroyers aren't going to be terribly accurate. All of them are going to have low-ish rate of fires, low-ish damage output on their guns. And Wix can really kind of bully some of these ships around. The torpedoes, you know, okay, you have a 6.5 kilometer detection range, so it can't stealth torpedo without getting clever. But... Because they are five kilometers and they are relatively close to our detection range, we can play around with shots on ships that are coming towards us or ships that we're paralleling and ahead of. And hopefully we'll get to see some of that in the battle video. Overall, I think Wix is a pretty solid destroyer. Uh, her biggest downside, again, I think is just going to be just rate of fire. Uh, we're not to the point where the U.S. destroyers get their ridiculous rate of fire on the 5-inch 38s. That won't happen until Tier 5 Nicholas. Uh, we do get the Clemson next tier, which does have decent gun DPS because of the dual gun configuration, which we'll talk about when we get there. But Wix does not have access to that. Um, her other biggest downside is definitely that detection range. Not being the stealthiest destroyer, she will always be spotted first. And again, if, if we're playing as aggressively as I think we should be, Probably not a huge issue. All right, let's stop talking about this in the video. Uh, let's stop talking about this in the port, rather, and let's go look at it in a battle video. All right, so this battle video I've chosen is a small battle, so don't expect huge damage numbers, but it, it's demonstrating a couple very important tactics. One is that... I, I don't know what else to call it aside from blatant disregard for general norms when it comes to destroyer play. It's probably a bad habit, but... At these low tiers, we can kind of get used to it. And I encourage you guys to play this blatantly aggressive as well. You're going to die a lot, but it, it, it teaches you an important lesson, which is when and how to push the envelope with regards to, uh, you know, where your edges of performance are. And there's only one other destroyer. It's a Romulus. So, I'm... Yay. Uh, <laughs> I, I literally don't know what that means. In this battle, you know, we, we end up trading blows fairly frequently, but I end up doing significantly better than him for some odd reason. Uh, we're going to go to B. It's usually where, especially in these smaller matches, where everybody seems to go to and congregate. Uh, Wix's reload time, I forgot to mention this, Wix's reload time and torpedo arcs are absolutely phenomenal. Uh, it is easily one of the best ships uh, at this tier for the damage of the torpedoes uh, versus its reload time and the number. And yes, it is still a choo-choo boat, so that's always good too. Uh, with us going to B, we'll get to see some tactics, but the real reason why I chose this video is I wanted to show you what is probably the single most important tactic for a U.S. destroyer to learn, which is engaging and disengaging and disengaging tactics. Uh, engaging and disengaging, what I mean by that is, is pushing to the cap and knowing when you can hang around and when you need to get the heck out of dodge. Uh, as you can see here, you know, we're going to crest around this corner and boom, instantly spotted. Thank you to the absolute horrible detection range. You can see the Romulus is a significantly stealthier ship, but we did almost a thousand damage at the seventh of his hit points in just two hits. So... It does hit fairly hard when it comes to other destroyers. Now look at the tactic that I'm using here. Specifically, look at the rudder. Uh, you can see it there in the middle of the screen. 
Look at what my rudder is doing every single time I fire. Okay, pay attention to what we're doing here so that we don't beat ourselves. Not that it's a huge deal. Okay, we, we, we sent out torpedoes just in case he decided to turn in. And as I predicted, uh, the enemy decided that they were going to play pretty hard this way. So we're going to we're gonna turn ourselves around. Uh, I decided to turn the hard way for some reason. I don't know. Don't ask. <laughs> Things happen. Uh, but you saw how we, we played that, that entire first portion of the battle out. We didn't get super... We were super aggressive, I and mean, we did 2,500 damage to that Romulus, which is not insignificant. That's a quarter of his hit points. And we took no damage ourselves. And uh, we've kept them from capping it as well. Very important tactics. Very, very useful. So now he's coming back in. He's playing aggressive. Uh, the nearest threat is that Tenryu. Uh, but realistically, Tenryu unless it's played by a very competent player, is not overly scary. When you see a ship shoot at you like that, you want to turn in a little bit if you if you can. Oh, torpedoes, so slow down and turn in. Again, uh, just narrow torpedo beating that. And accelerating once again. Thankfully, we have the the engine boosts on. That was the first time we took damage, and we, we actually got hit by a battleship that did that. There's Tenryu landing her first shot on us. Romulus, you know, we set Romulus on fire. So now as we're we're starting to head out of this fight, you're going to see we're going to start using concealment to launch torpedoes at the Nassau. Uh, which is, you know, it's a battleship. It's coming towards us. And so this is one of those key things. We have a five kilometer range on our torpedoes. However, because he's coming towards us, He's going to enter that five kilometer range by the time uh, our torpedoes get there. Ooh. <laughs> that was probably the Romulus, to be honest with you. So, again, we're, we're max rudder over. <laughs> Don't really want to expose myself quite yet. Got about 11 seconds, 10 seconds or so left on torpedoes, and I'm sitting here thinking, oh, we're good. And look at how close the Nassau is now. So now he's 5k away. And uh, knots are there, which saved us. Another thing that I want to point out, too, is, is when you're in smoke, especially as a U.S. Destroyer player, you're going to rely on your smoke quite a lot. Uh, big problem with relying on your smoke is, is it's very likely that enemy torpedo-equipped ships are going to be launching torpedoes into that smoke. So you definitely don't want to hang around in your smoke too long without some form of hydro or something like that. So now we're going to swing to the other side. We're going to bring the other set of torpedoes to bear. And I'm just kind of firing roughly in the area of where I think he'll be. If he turns in, um, I have a video on torpedo aiming, but if he turns in there, you know, he's going to eat a torpedo. So now we'll, we'll launch one at the marker and then we'll launch one short because no matter what direction he turns, he's going to end up, the marker is going to end up moving more towards uh, towards the right. So we got him with one. And that was a set of torpedoes we launched effectively blind. And now you can see again. Watch what I'm doing with the rudder. I'm switching sides to get the guns to bear. And then we'll, we'll alternate back as uh, as he shoots at us. We're going to change directions. So we change directions. Okay, so we avoided a significantly worse shot than we could have possibly taken. Now at these tiers... Uh, you know, not a huge, uh, not a huge risk. So once again, he's far enough away that, uh, you know, you, if you, all you saw was five kilometers, I can't launch torpedoes unless they're five kilometers away. You're missing out the opportunity to do damage because those torpedoes will easily get there. He's moving forward. There's a good dodge there. He's moving forward. He's taking torpedoes himself, so he's going to slow down a little bit. Uh, but uh, now we're going to switch our focus back to the Romulus. And this is where U.S. Destroyers definitely have an advantage. So you can see we've got three guns to bear to his two-ish, depending on how he, uh, how he himself moves. And we're just, we're just kind of sort of clipping him, not doing a whole lot in the way of damage. We're going to throw another set of torpedoes at the Nassau, whom uh, I believe is going to flood out here, but... Now, oh, AP Salvo there, thinking maybe the Romulus would maybe get a little bit better damage with AP. And that's a heck no. HE doing way more damage. Tenryu pops up. Nassau is dead. 
So now with the Tenryu around, I'm not really overly afraid of, of the Romulus. I'm more afraid of the Tenryu if Tenryu gets lucky. And uh, generally speaking, they don't. <laughs> That's pretty cocky to say. Uh, I, I'm just not all that afraid of Tenryu at these longer ranges. The, the rounds really don't do a whole lot of damage. Okay, he's got 193 left. Can we get him before he disappears? Oh, come on. Oop, more torpedoes. Nice. Got him. All right, cool. And we dodged yet another set of torpedoes. So I hope you can see with just that little scenario there how we kited them back to our friendlies. That is an important tactic for U.S. destroyers to learn and be proficient at. Now, you got to know when you have an advantage. In that case, we didn't have an advantage until the very, very end here. Uh, Tenryu is going away, so that means torpedoes are outbound. Yep, there they are. Um, the other handy part about this is knowing what ships have torpedoes. Tenryu, uh, pretty much all Japanese cruisers have torpedoes. Uh, it's just an assumption that if they ever expose a broadside that there's torpedoes inbound. But, um, now that, uh, now that we're kind of catching up to Tenryu, we'll go ahead and engage again. But, uh, you gotta know when to engage and disengage. So, we went to the cap, there was myself and a cruiser, uh... Things did not go well. The Caledon, I think is what it was, um, bailed effectively. And they pushed. They pushed with uh, three ships through the center. And so we needed to get out of there. And I had already turned myself around thinking, well, maybe we'll get some more support from the two battleships. And unfortunately, we got none. And so we had to get out of there. So we popped our smoke to cover our retreat. We threw out torpedoes to keep them maneuvering, to slow them down, because every time they maneuver, you know, they're slowing down. And we got out of there. Uh, and once we were out in the open waters and we were detected and it was obvious that we're not going to be uh, hidden for very long, we just opted to stay up oh, some preemptive torpedoes in case Tenryu decides to turn around. Uh, we, we just opted to stay in that kind of, I call it a kiting, like you're kiting away from, uh, the enemy ships. Um, we stayed in that attitude and we just, we continued to use our rudder. Our rudder never really stopped moving the entire time that we were, uh, engaging ships. And you'll see it again here. So as we shoot, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna utilize our rudder and we're just going to continue to, uh, attempt to do damage. Rack up the damage. Okay, shot at us. We turned in. And you can see how that affected his uh, his accuracy. He ended up missing. Which is good for us. Another thousand damage. And now we know we can continue this press. One. Oh, no. He's he no longer spotted. So, unfortunately, we can't shoot over the island. But uh, as we get around the edge of this island, we'll be able to engage him again. Now, when he's retreating, it's harder for us to hit him because we have to be closer to him, and it, it gives him all of the advantage. Uh, and we don't want to give him too much of an advantage if we can avoid it because he does have, you know, heavier caliber guns. They do have much better HE damage, and it's a risk. We definitely don't want to do too much. But at eight kilometers away, and we're kind of... Uh, we're not headed directly towards him. It, it's fairly hard for him to hit us with any any salvos that are going to do significant amounts of damage. And if we give him kind of a straight run and then when he shoots at us, we uh, we go ahead and turn in. It makes it even harder for him to hit us. So that's another tactic. So he shot. Now look at what happened to the rudder. We turned in. We even added some. We even slowed down there uh, and completely dodged his shots. Any ship that has a high trajectory like that, U.S. light cruisers, especially at the higher tiers, uh, have this problem. Anything that has these really high arcs, it's really easy to, to kind of game uh, their shots. You know, you give them that, I'm going to move in a straight line, and then when they shoot, you slow down and you turn in. That will really mess with people, and you can do that. So once again, some preemptive torpedoes in case he actually decides to turn around, which uh, he does, which is a mixed blessing, and I really don't want to be this close to a Tenryu, so... Once again, we resort to kiting back to our friendly destroyer, or our friendly ships, rather. Um, and we, we're getting those defend ribbons here as well. Now, Tenryu, I believe, has Hydro. If she doesn't, it's uh, certainly something to at least be cognizant of. All of our torpedoes missed, but, you know, uh, I'm just... We've got plenty to work with here. We can throw out other torpedoes. 
We do have to be careful with the Kawachi, but the Kawachi is a relatively slow moving ship. I'm not overly concerned. That first set of torpedoes, if he turns in, um, if he turns back in around, those will become, those will come into play. If he doesn't, um, or if he does that, <laughs> he'll get punished. <laughs> You definitely got to be careful with those uh, torpedoes. So now now we're just kind of openly engaging. Uh, he, he went dead in the water, and that's the reason why this is uh, fairly, fairly interesting. So get that kill. You can do it. <laughs> come on. Oh, he got his torpedoes off. Oh, come on. Ah, we got robbed. All right. So there, I hope you, I hope you saw the tactic that I was talking about. You, you know, being selectively aggressive, knowing when you can push and when you need to get away, and the tactics you need to get away. Abusing that rudder shift is going to be key all the way up through the line. So definitely worth check. You know, checking that in your memory permanently. Anyway, I'm Whiskey One One. I'm going to sign us out of the gaming lounge. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching.